Hello guys, um, I thought I do something useful in terms of this tutorial, useful for me. I am, in, well, at my studio in Aberdeen and I have a sculpture that will go to a CVA building for an exhibition fairly soon. This is gonna be a sculpture, although it's a drawing exhibition. But um, yeah, I need a transport box for, for this and so I need to build this. And I quite often, um, if I have to build stuff like that, obviously I always use Rhino to make the drawing, to extract the data in order to build something. This is uh, the head, which I carved a couple of years ago. Um, so this needs, obviously, it's in a little shelf here in my studio. Um, and I want to build a box for this as well as the bronze base. I measured it up. So this is uh, a quick measurement of uh, the head itself. It's basically, these are the sort of, um, just the baseline um, measurement I took in order to build a box. Uh, right, um, here is the tutorial to build um, a solid object in wood. Um, I try to include a few things, uh, a few of the materials we, we, we have at our disposal. Again, I, I need to make a transport box for, for my head and I, you know, I just gonna build it and then you can sort of follow up. You have obviously um, made good progress with a finger locking box in small, but here um, we will just use a few more solid materials and different, different sort of methods. So, uh, okay, um, the first thing I want you to have a look at is this one. So, um, our tool, um, our material will mainly consist out of plywood, and then we've got this uh, timber and uh, two by twos, as I call it, and two by fours, um, uh, two by ones. So this is plywood, 18 mil thick, quite durable, so you can build solid furniture out of it. This is, you know, a bit nicer. It's natural, naturally sourced. It's only 10 mil thick and 100 millimeter wide. So this is 100 mil, and the thickness is 10 mil. Uh, this is a two by two, um, so a square, a square shape, uh, 40 mil by 40 mil, or we have half of it, so it's 20 mil by 40 mil. So this is the sort of starting point where you need to depart your design from. So whatever you need to build needs to be made out of these types of materials. Um, and um, yeah, so, so you you know, yesterday, I think one of the students kind of came and she wanted to make a sort of a fluffy sack. That's obviously um, kind of impossible when you have solid strips of wood and solid planes of wood. Um, I mean, there you could perhaps build an inner structure and staple a soft form over it, um, but um, We, you know, I think when we make things, be it in the design or be it in the sculpture, uh, 3D arena, we have an idea. We think what materials will be useful to bring that idea to life. And then we sketch a plan out, A, to handle the material, and to process the material and to make, you know, come up with the right design, the right methods, and, and then come to a conclusion, build the, build the thing you want to build. Okay, so um, I think you have seen this um, prior. This is the sort of drawing I depart from. I always make these little drawings uh, whenever I build something, it's just a sort of, um, you think it through before you start. Um, so I would never start something without a little hand sketch just to build the process in my mind. 
Um, also, to have a quick reference point, um, so obviously the marble head is, I measured it up, and I need to make this box, transport box. Um, let's stick this here on my other monitor. And uh, let's begin. Okay, I already have my Rhino, uh, Rhino open. Here we go. Uh, no, I don't actually like it that way. I like it more this way. I believe some can't see this thing in the bottom. Um, there's obviously a difference between a Rhino for Mac and Rhino for um, Windows. Windows obviously has more information there. Um, what I prefer actually with a with a Mac version is it seems to be cleaner and somewhat easier to navigate from. But um, as you see, I, I start from here. I don't want this here either. Uh, oh, it's put it there. Gotta have the screen. Okay, right. Uh, I start with the base plate. So I built the whole thing pretty much out of 18 mil ply. Um, perhaps I quickly draw what we actually have. So let's say 100 by 100 by 18 mil. So whenever um, you work with Rhino, what's that there? I'm going to put this I'm basically in the way. Oh, this is 10 by 100. So um, here we've got the plywood. Um, so that's 80 mil thick. That's just a little plate, 100 by 100 by 18 mil. Um, if you go to box edit, you click onto it, you can obviously also uh, um, change the shape. What's the size here? Yeah. So you can type whatever, 300 by 300. You go apply change the shape okay so that's the plywood i'm i will be using mm, and but i quickly make a reference to the other materials we have so we've got the two by two as we call it um let's do it here so um whatever make it 500 by um, 40. So here, that's the two by two, as I say. So it's a square stick, basically. And we have half of it. Uh, so I can sort of press out, make a copy. And we have basically uh, the Z, Z component on 20. So we have these types of sticks, basically, yeah, 40 by 40 and 20 by 40. So as a base material, uh, what do we have? Got the 40 by 40. Uh, what was the, what was the third one? Um, oh yeah, the really thin stuff. So the natural plywood. Uh, start again. Um, so here. Go X, let's do 250, and then the height is only 100. The thickness is 10 mil. Yeah, so, so here are the sort of four materials at, at our disposal. A little bit closer to here, let me have it in the perspective. And for those who are interested in renderings, uh, if we go to materials, I, I alluded to, I think, in class, if you want to give, you know, illustrate, basically, or give a better impression what you actually want to make, it's quite useful to render it with the material. For that, you need to render, uh, import the materials from a library. So you click on this little thing. And then you go import from material library. 
the material library should be already there. So you have uh, all these materials listed here. I want to obviously go for a wood material. Um, and I think we have some uh, uh, so the plan um, oh, we have something like fur, like a duckless fur, exactly. Uh, you get, now this is Polish, you just want to have the normal one. Okay, let's, let's get this one here. I'm not going to stick you there. Stick you there. Uh, duckless fur, open. So we have this duckless fur here now. So this is obviously the thin, the thinner material we have. You right click and you assign this object to the selected item. Okay, nothing changes now because we are here in the perspective view, but in the wireframe mode. If we go to render, you see that the Douglas fur is applied to this material. So uh, we can again go to our. Uh, um, import materials, um, go to wood. Do we have something like engineered wood? Let's just kind of the beach. Okay, let's do let's do this in beach. right click assign to objects so we have sort of you know two different types of wood here you can work with let's save this on the desktop for now transport box okay right i prefer to kind of go into Shaded mode a little bit. There we go. So, um, so these are the starting points. Let's put this a little bit at the side. Also, go and stick this into a layer. Um, right click or enter. You can name it. So, the base materials as reference. And this is quite a good, useful tool here. I was showing it to students yesterday. This is what looks like a cake, I think, in Rhino 7. It sticks here on the top. So basically, it looks a bit like a French cake because it comes in French colors. A uh, little triangle there. And if you go change opposite to current layer, yeah. So all these selected pieces should be now in the base material layer. You can actually. Let me do that for your effect now. Ah, I need to activate the layer. Okay, again, this, I select the items I want to put into this layer. What I forgot is to click the blue button here that to activate this layer. And then we go again. Now we have a change object to current layer. So hopefully they're in there now. Yes. So. I can sort of hide this stuff now and always kind of open it as a, as a reference. That's um, a, useful, a useful way to separate certain parts of your design. If you, you know, we have, I don't know, structural parts, or if you want to make a mixture of steel and wood, I would definitely start putting certain parts into different layers mm -hmm. and you can activate and deactivate these layers, um, which makes it easier to navigate through an object. Okay, right. Um, well, we, okay, 
Now I need to kind of go back to my technique, to this one, to my little sketch. So I will start obviously with the base. Uh, the inner part is 230 by 20, 270. Okay. Okay. We start with a zero. And then we go 230 by 270. I use a keyboard. One of these. Um, with a with a keypad and with a with a numbers pad, which you can't see now because Zoom is rendering my background out. But I find this really quite useful. Um, so if you have an old keyboard at home, just plug it into your laptop. Put the laptop slightly higher up. I find this is a much easier way to to work. Okay, we've got the two forty. Uh, 230 by 270. The, the height, obviously, we work with 18 mil plywood. Type in 18 and bingo. So, if you double want to check, we go here to our uh, box, edit, activate this, and then we can just see, yeah, we have the 230 by 270 by 18 uh, ready to go. Okay. Um, then again, now, so this is the inner part. Now I want to box it in. Um, just gonna, I would probably start here. Um, start here. This is 18. And then the height is about 270. No, the height is much more, it's 420. Okay. Yeah. And we go to the perspective view. Yeah, we can also put this down. I want obviously this to go down. And I would always go to, uh, to position. And you go zero and apply. So you, this is a data how in what what space, which location this particular panel is located in, and you can change it. So this is, for me, a much easier way to move things around rather than um, use, for example, the move command. You could do a move command as well. Um, when it comes to precision, you know, numbers are a very good, good way to go about things. Now, um, as the 270, is um, the inner part. So I want to make it a little bit longer. So the extrusion at the moment is 270. Let's make it, uh, no, the Z component here is 420. Let's make it to 430. Apply. Um, here we go. All right. So, so that's probably the back end. So this is the depth, yeah, okay. So this is the back board and I need a front board which I can open, yeah. So, you know, we have, we have had that already. You can just literally mirror this here, use the mirror command, find the midpoint, you can uh, check here in these sort of settings, the snapping midpoint should be activated, yeah, and then you get this little white dot. Um, press the shift key and it basically locates itself there. And then um, we can go from here again. Now let's do it here. Might be quite good too because it probably grabs it on the top. We don't want that. You want to grab the bottom end. There, sometimes it's quite useful to kind of go there. And 18 wide, and the height is what? What do we have here now? That's quite. I don't know what what happened here, but obviously we know we want the height of. 430 should be applicable to this one as well. Uh, 
and other opportunities to put 430. We need to apply it, pressing the return key. Doesn't work. Okay, this is good. And again, we mirror this. Right click on your mouse, your mirror command should turn up, and your kind of box is almost ready. Um, so I want obviously this one to open. And this is why it's actually good to kind of do this in a, in a cut program. Even when you design a, a little box, you have to now think, oh, how, how, what I'm going to do, where I'm going to put the lid on the top that lines up here or inside. I think I want to have it actually inside. So I just, uh, I would use the bottom extrusion. This one. Uh, you can press Alt. And then you get a copy already. So, and we can use the move command. And I want this obviously from this corner into that corner. Yeah. Has it done it now? Yeah, should be okay. Right now. We need an inner space of 420. Now, is this long enough? 430 and inner space. We actually need to make this a little bit longer. Hold on. I'm going to activate all four. Not this one, but that one. So I activated all the four sides and I want them longer. Hold on. Yeah, why is this activated here? This and this and this and this one. Okay, they're all 430. Make them 450. So they stretch a little bit. And the lid here needs to be also uh, in the Z position. Well, I can actually just kind of move it. Um, um, so right click, move, grab it there, stick it there. Save it. So, okay. Now, um, when you look, when I go back to my drawing, I want because it has a sort of a bronze plinth. Bronze plinth needs a little support on the back because I don't want the head, the bronze plinth, to rattle inside. So I want the plinth kind of slotted into a, a little harness. So I need a little bit of a support. And I need that six by seven. So I'm just gonna make a little board here. That's the quickest way to do that. Oops, I just gonna copy this and make it the moment it's seventy, but I only want it sixty. So we have it here. Um, here. And I copy this now. And turn this. So if you click on these round rings here, you click onto it, enter, and then it turns whatever by whatever degrees you want it. 
So, and I want this one 70 high. At the moment, is the, in the Z direction only 60, but we are wanting 70 high. We apply that. Okay. Now, um, somewhere there. And we can actually organize this perhaps seems slightly better. Again, I activate this, right click your move. You want this one there. And then you want to move this all the way down. So, wrong tab. And again, right click, move. This down to the floor, and this builds a little bracket to support the head. The head has a the bronze plinth here, and this part will be supporting the, the plinth structure. And that's pretty much it. Now, um, as to an idea. So basically we have the front view, the right view. Um, then this is the view from the top. It's this one. Twenty-seven. Can we have I done something wrong? Thirty to seventy. So these are the long ones. This is the short one. Okay, I want this one wider actually. Um, so it's quite good when you when you have some stuff like this happening. So I want this wider. Um, I want this to kind of open up because this is a for me. Basically, I will have the head in here facing in this direction, and I want to. this one to sit here rather than inside because I could not open it properly. So how are we going to do this? I want this there. Right click move. I want it here. And then we can make a scale. The normal scale will do. The base point is from here. Oh no. When it goes scale, it goes into all directions. I just want to have it in one direction. Want to have it in non-uniform scale. Want to have it from here. Done. So we just kind of scaled this up. So if you want one a three-dimensional object to scale all in one direction, if you go to this, you have. Um, various because you can scale if you start scaling it goes scaling in all directions or you can limit it to scale in 3d or in 2d so for example if you want to have an x and y drawing you will scale that up or if you want to scale an x and y drawing only in one direction you would go scale 1d yeah you need to sort of practice with these things and you figure it out yourself really quickly yeah but this is also a good way to you know change things now obviously we have an overlap here 
Again, it's quite nice that we have a few mistakes here, which I want to eradicate. So here we go, the Boolean difference. Select the surface or polysurface you should subtract from. I want this as an object to distract from, and this one, done. And then you select the surface, the polysurface you subtract with. I want the front page here, and then bingo. So we have this one. And if we look at this from the perspective view, this extrusion, and we want to rotate this, type in rotate. If you wanna, wanna make something in your drawing, like moving or rotating or something, um, sometimes it's quite useful just type in the word into your command line. It's quite likely you have a command, yeah? If you need a circle, type in circle, and then you have various options of what circle. Uh, that you usually get hints on the top what what it is, what you want, yeah? So the center of rotation will be here, in this direction. Okay, this makes it a little bit clearer. That's the transport box. Okay, uh, let's apply a bit of a render here. And now, I, I don't think you need to even go as far as indicating what sort of joints you want. Um, again, if we, we look at our materials, uh, we need to go to our base material. Let's view this. Okay, here are our base materials. So only this thing, this thin um, Douglas fir, the sort of bright Douglas fir we have at the campus, this is a good material to use for finger joints. Yeah, um, the plywood I would use with um, biscuit joints. Uh, these you can actually use screws quite well. I, I don't want you to encourage you to use nails, but screws is a, a good way to connect. Obviously, these things if you support it with glue. Um, the, the biscuit joints go always with glue, um, of the finger joints with, with glue as well. So I probably just kind of biscuit join the lot here. Um, I think I have an earlier drawing. It's got so many drawings here. Where is that? It might be in current. box design here. And the nice thing when you when you start drawing in Rhino, um, you build up, you basically build an archive of things and you can reuse bits and pieces. I do that all the time. Um, so for example, here, this biscuit, I just copy it. Obviously, we all know what, what copy means. Okay. And obviously, when I paste it, it goes into here, and you, you have here the biscuit somewhere. Okay. Um, so, just as an indication, where would my biscuit join this? Okay, all right, here we have it. Um, oh, it's basically in a separate, uh, in its own layer that calls biscuits, or I call biscuits, which is quite nice. So if you copy things from another object, it also comes with this, the right layer, so you can, um, you know, on and off activate that layer, which is very, very useful. Because if you start shifting things around, you don't want things, fixed assets to move around either. So, um, yeah, so um, we need a 
joint obviously here. So I need the biscuit in this direction. Okay, up there on the top as well. So I need to rotate this by 90 degrees. Um, and we want it there somewhere, right in the middle. Sort of do some measurements, but for, for now, this is accurate enough. So we have it there. And for this, perhaps we're gonna go to the front view, all in the front view. So it sticks between this side and the front side. Um, and um, also what works really well with, with Rhino is when you want to array to multiply things. Um, and that's obviously, so we want to array it in the Z direction, the up and down direction, the blue one, not in the X, not in the Y. So we continue to uh, array X, Y, 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 one, and the Z number, I probably think four would be good. Yeah. And spacing, so you start from here, start from somewhere here. Second reference. Hold on, what's happening here? I need to Z this. Okay, let's do arrays again. So X done, done, Z direction done, spacing. So this is the perspective. Usually you get a, yeah, this is what I wanted. Pull it up basically. That's okay. So we have these four biscuits now. And I can quite easily now mirror these ones over. It's also um, quite a good command. If you only want to activate things in one layer, um, I think it's called cell layer, select layer, select layers. And then I want to activate the biscuit one. So I have those four biscuits now activated. Again, it's good to select, uh, to put things into layers and then you can individually access them. You don't have to sort of figure out, oh, you know, click on it. It's, it's just much, much easier to put things in layer. Here we go. And I mirror this should be somewhere in my right click option, mirror point there. And we mirror, um, hold on, apple Z that we again want to select layer the biscuits and we again mirror them uh, no we don't want to make because this will be a different connection so answer this perspective so here, um, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna, I try to kind of get something like Klavierband. Um, let, let me look, uh, I don't know the, what the, uh, the, the, um, the, the Cantonese word for Klavierband is, I only know the German one, Klavierband. Yeah, it's kind of like a long hinge. Yeah. And they're not expensive and usually you can sort of nail them in or with little screws you can just chop them to the length you want and then on the other side i'm going to make little snaps nice little transport box it's always useful to have one to stack away because it was very expensive and it took a long time to make that marble sculpture so i you know it's good to have a good transport box um 
Uh, so I've got to make a clavier band, one of those long hinges on this side, and here's some clips. And here at the top also, I would probably make, we'll make some biscuit joints. Okay, right. Um, and if we want, I would the whole thing, I would click this one out, I select everything. Um, we go plywood, assign to the objects, and if we look at it, in the rendered mode, got this box now, with a little support for the bronze stand. Now, the important thing for next week, I want you all to start um, and you should use at least two to three different types of joining materials. Ideally, I would like to make a, a finger locking joint, uh, use big biscuit joints, um, you know, you might use screws at some point, but they have to be all solid connections. And um, important is you need to come up with a cutting list. So in order to get a cutting list, you need measurements, yeah? So, hold on, I'll just show you again. It's this bit here, and you get many, many options. So you can always start with linear dimensions, and then uh, you need to experiment, but it's, you know, these are horizontal and vertical. These are the sort of most used ones. If you have a lot of measurements in one direction, horizontally, for example, use horizontal lines continuous so you can go whatever ding 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 just test it out yeah i start with linear dimensions and usually go here and if you do that you see there's no number where's the number and you have to kind of really 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 zoom in in order to figure out oh it's 288 yeah in order for you to see it Go to settings. And this might be already improved in uh, Rhino 7. I'm not quite sure. Um, and here, but basically, in order to change the settings of this one, you go settings and you go to annotation styles. Usually, it starts with a height is only like one millimeter. Yeah. So type in 20. And it's probably a little too much. Do 10, not 12. So is it. So here, go to top view. Shade it. Oh, let's work with wireframe. Um, so in the shaded mode, you can see, so see, so my two sides left and right are 288 in depth. So if I, if I go linear dimensions, what else do I need? I need this one, 230. Um, and so this sticks inside. You can also do the aligned dimensions. So it aligns itself to the direction you're taking it. Yeah, so 266. Um, and then the height, obviously. Right click, linear dimensions, the height is. Yeah. 450. And then these little inner parts, zoom in here, right click, linear dimensions, this one, this one. So that's 60 by 70, and the width is 50. A little bit deceiving because it's at an angle. Um, We want also from here. Okay. 
So these little supporting ones here, they're 230 in width. I think that's pretty much all I need. So, and what I usually do is, actually it's quite useful to do, I, I, I love Excel sheets. Um, you will see. What I usually do is, I, I, what you could do is you can just, whatever. If you go to the top view, you could go print. And a good way is uh, you have the A4. If you have an A4 printer, you want to set the window. Yeah. So here, you set the window which you want to print. And then you have the view from the top, and then you can either, you know, export it as a PDF or, you know, um, that might be actually not a bad idea to save it as a PDF into my, my well, I think I've got a folder on my, on my desktop, if I can ever find it. Here we go. Cutting files, transport box. Um, let's draw in one. Yeah. And now I get an error message. Sometimes it's also quite easy just to do a, a screenshot. Um, what I usually do is I go and make an Excel sheet. Yeah. Merge this transport box head. Okay, and then we have so the items. Then we always know the thickness of the material, so we basically just need two measurements how wide how high is it and how wide is it yeah so um we could just say x and y because we know it's always deep is 18. so uh side panel so we've got the 288 also take it directly from yeah so here these two side panels here it's high where is my excel sheet again it's 250 at 450 and then amount quite good we need two and then uh, the back. So that's this one here. And it's not even necessary to look at the measurements. I actually can see it here. Yeah. So that's 230 by 450. Make this a little bit smaller. Yeah. So we have this back panel in your box edit. The size is 230 by 450. Uh, we only need one. And then we've got the front. Now, be careful with this um, because this is the size in X and Y dimension. Yeah, so it measures it from basically it measures it this space it inherits. Yeah, so you have to be careful. So here I would go with the aligned dimensions. It's a 266 front is the 266. 
and I know it's also 450. I need one. And then what I need is the top and the bottom. So it's this one and this one. They should be all the same. Yeah, it's the 230 by 270. Top, bottom. Um, and keep a bit. Now, was it again? Two thirty by two thirty by two seventy. We obviously need the top and the bottom, so we need to. Okay. Anyway, um, and then I will add obviously these little strips later on. What I, you know, this exercise is more. Why do we make a drawing? We make a drawing in order first to kind of figure out the design. Once we have the design, we can take the measurements from the design and bring it, you know, into a list. So all I will actually use is I can probably just kind of put this on my phone. Um, and um, so this is my cutting list. I know there will be there will be two more these ones, but this is my entire cutting list. So I can measure it, mark it, go to the big wall saw, and um, and 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 cut everything. So it's not like you start with a piece of wood, and then you kind of measure, and then and then you think, mm, how am I going to do this? You make the design first. You, clarify what you want to do and then you take the data out um transfer the data obviously into something that is useful and easily easily to use in the workshop because it's not you know it's dirty there um so make sure you're well prepared and then cut everything um you know as almost like the, this is the start you prepare everything and then it comes to you know, assembly, which is then the next task. But um, so this is a sort of a little excursion into sketching something up. And what you sketch up and what you want to build is entirely up to you. Obviously, you can make it much, much more um, uh, sophisticated. Um, and what I want you to do is, if you make a box, for example, you could make the lid, um, make a light laser cutter engraving in it, we could make the sides uh, as finger joints, you could make little legs out of it, which we can, I don't know, carve or, you know, shape and glue on, um, all these sort of things, you can sort of make it up. Uh, if you're not quite sure how, how, how you can render it, you can also make a hand drawing it, but make sure that you have the basic structure kind of ready, ready to cut because we have three more weeks for the production. Make sure you, you know, you get going now. Yeah. Okay. If there are any questions, just, I don't know, drop me a, um, drop me a, a note. Uh, and it is, I don't, I, I don't appreciate students writing to me individually, uh, if it's more like a general question, just if it's, you know, obviously if it's personal, di direct directly to me, but a lot of it is, you know, general questions, just stick it in the chat. Uh, I answer in the chat um, and you can sort of follow it in the chat um, and, and go from there. All right. Okay, so that was the next thing I want you to do. And um, next week, I will always give you a little design, uh, um, a little design task to do every week in Rhino, just to kind of keep you in the flow, to keep you working with it, um, because it is indeed a, a really, really good tool. So next week, I probably ask you to design a little table. Um, or if you haven't concluded what you want, uh, or if it's a little bit more complicated, if you want to add more complexity, you can start with a basic sketch of what you want to do here in Rhino and then 
continue to work on it, you know. So, for example, if you want to make a box and now you want to add little legs or something or a handle or whatever, um, you can sort of add things week by week. That it really, you, you are the driver behind that. Yeah. Okay. I think that was it for what I need to know right now. Okay. Um, I see you next week in class. These designs need to be uploaded on the Moodle, uh, on the Mirror platform. And I want all of you to come with the cutting lists ready for action next week. Okay.